Many fair weather crypto traders are out of the market right now. Leveraged and speculative traders are disappearing and we enter the realm of the long-term investor. People who dollar cost average over the long term are looking to strike. Hey guys, James here. This is a market update with five altcoins to watch. Timestamps for each are in the description. Before we get into the top five altcoins I'm looking at, we need to understand the current state of the market. This is the current price of gold. Gold is valued in the US dollar and you can see over the last few days, it has fallen off significantly and this absolutely affects crypto prices as well. Crypto prices are of course valued in the US dollar, just like every other commodity out there, stocks as well. They will fall off when the dollar strengthens. Here is what's known as the dollar price index. It is the US dollar versus a basket of foreign currencies. And you can see over the last few days, a massive rise in the dollar index. Yes, 90 to 92 is huge when it comes to this type of thing. The reason for this is because the Federal Reserve had indicated a possibility that they might start thinking about inflation. No, they aren't doing it, but they just signaled that inflation was something that they were thinking about talking about possibly in the future. It sounds crazy, but that does move the market. The dollar has strengthened because the Fed has moved the market. A stronger dollar means commodity prices, stocks, and yes, cryptocurrencies will fall in value because the dollar has strengthened. All else being equal, a stronger dollar means asset prices will go down. In any case, it's important to know this. And for most of us, who are long-term investors, dollar cost averaging is something to be aware of. If you don't know what DCA is, I will leave a link to the ultimate crypto trading guide in the description. I do suggest watching the unit on dollar cost averaging and actually getting into your assets over the long term. You can see it's normal to see inflation fears immediately after recessions, but they tend to ease sharply or entirely reverse. We are in the period right now where inflation fears are starting to creep in. But as you can see from history, the Fed always cuts again for two years after the recession. And in no way, shape or form is the Fed stopping the money printing. But nonetheless, inflation fears right now are having a negative effect on asset prices, including cryptocurrencies. Coming to Ethereum then, huge news with Ethereum at the moment. Ethereum's London hard fork set to go live on the testnet starting June 24th. Even though Ethereum is absolutely behind some other blockchains with its implementation of proof of stake and also implementing reliable fees, Ethereum is still the key altcoin to look for. The London hard fork will not move the price of Ethereum in my opinion. Macro factors are determining the price right now. However, it is an important step. EIP1559 attempts to at least make fees more reliable. According to Cointelegraph, EIP1559 is expected to reduce gas costs for users significantly. Price moves for this upgrade have already been factored in, however. The longer term bullish upgrade, of course, is Ethereum 2.0. But as we know from news over the last few weeks, Ethereum 2.0 will not be coming until at least 2022. Ethereum is still the go-to blockchain for decentralized finance though, and Ethereum being the largest is attracting the most institutional investment. Ethereum still has the network effect and the benefit of having many developers developing dApps on the Ethereum network for years. This means that as institutions pour in, there is going to be big price support for Ethereum. It also shows how successful other layer two blockchains have been with Ethereum saying that originally the plan during this huge upgrade cycle was to work on shard chains before the merge to address scalability. However, with the boom of the layer two scaling solutions, the priority has shifted to swapping from proof of work to proof of stake. Ethereum has its competitors, but for right now, institutions will continue to pile money into Ethereum with the hope that Ethereum moves over to proof of stake and those institutions can start reaping the rewards from proof of stake rewards and also the fees paid on the system. Next up, we have Solana, which is quietly building a gigantic decentralized finance ecosystem on their blockchain. Solana have recently raised over $300 million in a push to expand the decentralized finance offering on the Solana ecosystem. And for those who don't know Solana, Solana essentially has extremely low fees and extremely fast block times. 
meaning that transactions go through extremely quickly and at a much, much lower cost than Bitcoin or Ethereum. The problem Solana has is that it isn't Ethereum. Ethereum-based dApps have the vast majority of crypto investment. Right now, almost $60 billion of value locked in Ethereum DeFi. Solana then has an uphill battle with none of the big names currently on their system. However, Solana is definitely flying under the radar. Yes, like I mentioned, those layer two solutions for Ethereum, such as Polygon, are getting a lot of hype, but Solana is on the radar of Grayscale as well. Grayscale is one of the largest investors in cryptocurrency with their various funds, and Solana is on the radar of these large companies to invest in. When the hype fades, decentralized finance is going to be here for the long term. Solana is looking to take advantage of that, along with Ethereum and other layer two solutions for Ethereum like Polygon. Next on the list, we have Polkadot and another Ethereum competitor. The world of decentralized finance is only just getting started and the amount of projects and fundamental growth on these blockchains is incredible. Each blockchain will have a different product offering and attract different types of users. Polkadot is an important part of this mix though. Charles Hoskinson of Cardano gave an almost five hour interview this week, which was a Cardano love-in. But one of the things he said was that he admitted to spying on Polkadot's technology, or at least looking and playing around with the code to see if they could find anything important and worth value. In the video, he said he absolutely did find a lot of value in Polkadot's code. And he also praised Polkadot's focus on the commercial aspect of their operation. The Polkadot blockchain is really set up to allow other developers to build on Polkadot as easily as possible. And at the moment they're doing this by something called parachain auctions. A parachain auction gives developers the ability to create new crypto assets and decentralized applications on top of the Polkadot network. Also extremely important for the future though is this line with interoperability with other blockchains as the main advantage. This is absolutely huge for Polkadot. Right now, we are looking at the base layer of the new internet. In the future though, this base layer will be here and forgotten about. It will be the dApps built on top. So think of Amazon on Google now, built on top of the actual internet. In the future, decentralized applications will rule the roost when it comes to cryptocurrencies and any blockchain that can allow for dApps to function cross-chain will participate in the growth of cryptocurrency in general. The next altcoin on the list is Chainlink. Very underrated, non-hypey cryptocurrency that never gets any love or hype. Chainlink is what's known as an oracle. An oracle takes real-world data and feeds it into the blockchain. Without real-world data, a blockchain is kind of useless when it comes to smart contracts, decentralized finance, and other applications. If you want to build anything on top of the blockchain with smart contracts, you absolutely need real world data fed in. Otherwise, without data, the smart contract cannot be executed. I use token metrics to always look at the fundamentals of a coin before getting in. If you use token metrics, you can see all of the important metrics of that token and even get some extremely good analysis as well. Something I always look at is the initial screening how many of the tokens are actually owned by the community versus the team and original investors. 50% or more of the tokens owned by the community is a good thing. If a coin has the majority of its tokens owned by the initial investors and the team, this could potentially mean that they will dump on the market at a later stage. If you wanna check out token metrics, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get a trial for 199. Like I said, Chainlink provides real world data for blockchains and they will continue to use their technology to integrate with dApps to securely and reliably connect real world events to the blockchain. Chainlink is boring and will never get any hype like Dogecoin or anything like that. It is a boring investment and that is why I like it. it goes under the radar and provides a real world use. And next up we have Cardano ADA. Some people really do not like Cardano, mainly because of Charles Hoskinson. That is completely irrelevant to me though. What is Cardano doing? It is giving us a low cost, reliable proof of stake blockchain. I always term Cardano as like a FOSS, a financial operating system, and nobody likes it and everybody picks on me for using that term. But basically the idea is that, you know, the world runs on systems, especially the financial world. You have, you know, the BIS and SWIFT and all this other stuff. And, it, and, and these protocols allow you to move value around and represent things like identity and, uh, and allow you to express yourself in some way. 
And those protocols, for the most part, work well for people in rich countries. And they don't work so well for people who aren't in rich countries. And so the point of what we do, or at least what I do and what my company does, is we, we think a lot about how do we build a universal protocol that does all the stuff the legacy system has, but just does it better, faster, and cheaper for all, everybody in the world. Cardano has massive ambitions to bring the unbanked into the banking sector. However, this is mitigated by the fact that the protocol is accessible from anywhere in the world at an almost zero cost. Shorter term though, Cardano is delivering on its promises. Within 90 days, we will have the Alonzo mainnet launch. It of course is way behind Ethereum in terms of launching and being first to market. Ethereum won that race, but Cardano will have smart contracts and proof of stake way before Ethereum. As we know at the start of the video, Ethereum won't have proof of stake until late 2022. Cardano has a simple blueprint with launching smart contracts. You have Alonzo Blue, which is the first of three development stages. You then go on to the second stage, which is Alonzo White, followed then by Alonzo Purple. This roadmap is 90 days in length, taking us to around about September 2021. And yes, Alonzo Purple is fully public. It's a very exciting time for Cardano rolling out smart contracts, and we should see the DeFi ecosystem on Cardano absolutely explode the tail end of 2021 into 2022. And it's going to be a very interesting battle between Ethereum and Cardano with these other proof of stake blockchains, seeing decentralized finance grow on all of their platforms. If you want to try out token metrics, getting the best analysis and analytics of tokens, do check out the link in the description. Also do subscribe for daily helpful crypto content and I'll see you in the next one.